With its stunning landscapes and rivers and dams filled with a diverse range of species, Southern Africa is considered one of the top destinations for fly fishing enthusiasts from around the world. If uh, you've got stress or you've worked too hard and then you go fishing, you forget about your problems and then you concentrate, then everything goes well, you won't even have a heart attack. The excitement of fooling a fish with an assortment of feathers and fur on a hook is what everyone's chasing. My mind just goes blank and I'm just in that moment. There's nothing else except you in that moment and that fish and it's just so much fun and so addictive. <laughs> and to get a fish's attention, you need a well-tied fly. I've been tanked for more than 30 years, so it's like in my veins. And around the world, top-notch guides from South Africa are helping guests land spectacular fish. As a fishing guide, your job is to actually catch the fish, but not using your body, using somebody else's body. This is fly fishing in Southern Africa. This is Inside Africa. This is Cape Town, South Africa, home to The Mission, a quirky magazine and website started by a group of friends that has, in a few years, become a go-to guide to all things fly fishing across Africa and beyond. Ultimately, we, we just wanted to do something that kind of reflected our mindsets, just something that wasn't focused on the how-to of fly fishing, more about the why you should, the sort of inspirational aspect. Only thing we didn't have was any business sense. Uh, <laughs> our business model was pretty unusual um, in that the magazine is free, both in print and online. I think it's worked out because there are zero barriers to entry, so anyone can pick up a copy wherever they find them. With its eye-catching covers and photography and visits to exotic destinations, the magazine quickly set itself apart. I think the way we differentiated ourselves from the beginning was to focus on the storytelling aspect. The pattern also works very well during the day. We've got lots of online content, you know, the sort of step-by-step -step tutorial kind of stuff, and we've got experts who weigh in on that. And along with tales of fishing expeditions, their content also includes profiles of up-and-coming anglers and top fly fishing guides, like Trevor Sitole. In 2017, they not only featured him in their second issue, they commissioned a short film about him. Trevor's a product of the Tendela Fly Fishing School, which was an initiative headed up by Richard Kumalo from Tendela. Trevor's probably their shining uh, success story. And, you know, going from this uh, little village in the Drakensberg to now jet setting. I know he was recently in the US, um, Bolivia, Seychelles. He's really kind of seeing the world off the back of fly fishing. Today, Trevor's back home in the foothills of the Drakensberg Mountains in KwaZulu Natal and reflects on how it all began. I'll literally go and sit on the gate and just watch and I'm like, I know there's something happening on the river. I know there's something happening on the water. And I know there's all these dudes with all these long sticks, flimsy, wobbly sticks. Before long, Trevor encountered the Tendela Fly Fishing Project on the Moy River near his home. So the Tendela project started in 2011. I would say more by chance there really than forward planning of any sort. I would met a couple of youngsters from the community. They'd been watching the ladies fishing and thought it was very interesting and thought they would like to learn. We were introduced through that to Richard Kamalo. He was the real coordinator on this end. So it almost came like natural. Um, I remember the one time Richard and Linda came up with their son, Matt. And Matt was like, hey dude, listen, take, take one of my rods. I felt that small tuck, tuck, tuck from a trout. I just panicked and I just did this with the rod. And there is this small little trout like this long flying out of the water in front of us right here. Though he clearly appeared to be a natural, Trevor never dreamt of making a living out of fly fishing. I went and started working in a uh, fishing shop as a salesman, which I was so good at it, I could sell you your own cap whenever I wanted to. 
Trevor still returns to the Wild Fly store in the nearby village of Nottingham Road when he's not traveling. He has a long history with the company, a tour operator and fly fishing content creator. Nice to get at least a significant specimen. They also manage a wide range of trout waters in the foothills of the Drakensberg Mountains. Trevor spends most of each year in the Seychelles, working for Alphonse Fishing Company at some of the best saltwater destinations in the world. I then saw um, Alphonse Fishing Company in one of their videos. Here's one of the South African guys. It, it can be done, it's, it's doable. And today, he'd be hard pressed to choose between fresh and saltwater fishing. For me, it's like, which one do you prefer? having your left hand or your right hand. I need both of them. Trevor Sitole, the Zulu fly guide, is one of the great success stories of the South African fly fishing scene and now guides all over the world. Didn't even know you can make a career out of fishing. I always knew I just wanted to be outdoors. I love guiding. I love meeting new people. And I was like, okay, well, if I can make a living out of this, yes, let's do it. As hard as it is, it's also really one of the fun, cool jobs to do, like hands down. I wouldn't give it up for anything. Internationally, Fly fishing has been a traditionally male-dominated sport, with relatively few so-called women in waders. But in recent years, there's been a growing participation of women in fly fishing, both as anglers and as industry professionals. Currently, I think I am the only female fly guide in South Africa or Southern Africa, and it has been a sport or hobby that hasn't really been marketed towards women. But I think in South Africa, we are starting to grow in that regard. People have woken up to the fact that women also really enjoy fly fishing. Anthea started fishing as a youngster. My mind just goes blank and I'm just in that moment. And then only got into fly fishing a bit later in life. And for me, I got hooked when I had my first yellow fish on a line. Yeah. Anthea first made her name here on the Val River where she still guides and fishes when she can. What I particularly love about fishing at Algo River Lodge <laughs> is that you have such diverse water. We've got some beautiful rapids that are broken up between scattered islands. And within these rapids are smallmouth yellowfish, known for their fighting spirit and as a popular game fish among anglers. I particularly love targeting smallmouth yellowfish because they are indigenous to South Africa and they are one of our fastest and hardest fighting freshwater fish that we have in our river systems. The reason we do catch and release on the vol is because our fish are indigenous and they are protected. Today, Anthea is based in South Africa's Northern Cape province and she also guides on the Zambezi River in Zambia, targeting tigerfish. What makes working on the Zambezi at Ngombe Zambezi River Lodge particularly amazing is that we are completely remote on our own private stretch of water. Mm -hmm. We have access to some of the most pristine water with tiger fish that have probably never seen a fly or a lure in that regard. And I think what makes it very special is the fact that it's truly a once in a lifetime experience. Wherever an angler is fly fishing, it requires specific skills and techniques to effectively cast the fly, manipulate the line and the lure, or fly, in a way that mimics natural bait or insects. Anthea maintains there's nothing better than landing a fish with a fly you yourself have tied. And it's such a great feeling of accomplishments because you've created the fly, you've taken the effort to get to the water, you've chosen that spot, and now you've landed that fish, and it's a feeling that you can't actually describe to someone. It's just such an accomplishment and such a joy. Beautiful. <laughs> But for some, fly tying is best left to the professionals like Zimbabwean master fly tyer Ray Mutumeri and Alfred Chiwaya. I will call on someone like 
Ray or Alfred, veteran Zimbabwean fly tires, and you know, when you go on a destination trip, they will come up with a destination pack. Their flies land up all over the place from the Amazon to the Seychelles, and you get a lot of happy customers catching their dream fish tied by these two brilliant fly tires back in Joburg. Ray Mutumeri started tying flies in the late 1980s in Zimbabwe and is now based at Mavungana Fly Fishing Store in Johannesburg. I do create uh, my own fly, but this guy is just maybe improving on some other people's flies which they have studied. Sometimes just make something look nice and also can swim nice because you have to attract fish as well as fishermen. Nearby, another Zimbabwean, Alfred Chiwaya, is thinking about flies before he even gets to work. I've already started tying a fly before I sit down. So it's like in my veins. I've been tying for more than 30 years. Fly Castaway is a tour operator that has for more than 20 tying years offered trips to the Seychelles and other exotic locations. We do the Seychelles, we do the Zambezi, we do Argentina, we do Mexico. We do Mongolia. Alfred says fly tying has changed his life. How I came to fly castaway, it's a dream come true. The person who told me that fly tying will take you anywhere in the world and it's going to help you, I thought he was right. I managed to come from Zimbabwe to South Africa, not with a university degree, but with fly tying. And now look where I am. While the African continent is home to some spectacular fly fishing destinations, one small town in South Africa has arguably become the nation's trout fishing capital. With most people getting into fly fishing, uh, when it comes to species, trout is your gateway drug. Just something that wasn't a you go to Dalstrom. It's the sort of trout mecca of South Africa. For many visitors to Dalstrom, Walkerson's is an obvious destination. The five-star hotel and spa has been welcoming guests for 30 years, offering fine country dining and access to more than a dozen dams stocked with trout. But there's another side to Dalstrom that's somewhat hidden. It's got fantastic private waters and you can get guys like Colin Chibangu or John Toobala who have access to these still waters and you can get really nice brown and rainbow trout fishing there. Colin and John are two friends who work with Mavungana Fly Fishing, an outfitter that conducts trips internationally from Argentina and the Amazon to Alaska, as well as across much of the African subcontinent. I've been working here for almost 23 years now and I've seen you know, so many people, you know, that we taught them how to fly fish when they were like teenagers. You know, we've got affordable prices, you know, for beginner. We've got like a mid-range prices, we've got top-end prices for the guys who knows what they are doing. You know, they come and buy expensive food. And the funny thing when they come to the shop, they'll look at you and say, what's your name again, John? Are you still here? You know, just... <laughs> and according to John's colleague, Colin, Part of what brings them back has a lot to do with Dalstrom's climate. You've got stress or you've worked in, you forget them. It's a capital city of fly fishing because of that, the weather patterns. In other areas in South Africa, you get trout, but it's so seasonal. Today, John and Colin are joined by junior fly fishing guide, Luke Waterman, at Mavungana's Fly Fishing's Trout Valley. When I grew up, it was like a normal fishing, but the fly fishing was new to me. To be honest, it doesn't come in easily. It involves quite a lot of uh, practice. You know, you need to learn the waters. When they're not fishing the dams of Dalstrom, Colin, John and Luke sometimes fish spots the locals don't even know about. Fishing a dam in a river is totally different because the river is moving water. If a beginner wants to fish the river, it's going to be really tough because uh, there's a lot of things that could go wrong there. Whilst Dalstrom is perhaps the trout capital of South Africa, in the mountain kingdom of Lesotho, there's another destination that attracts anglers from around the world, renowned not only for trout, but for smallmouth yellowfish, a freshwater species native to the rivers and streams of Southern Africa. I first became aware of the African waters, Bokong River, Makangoa, Community Camp, 
destination before we launched the magazine. And the year before it, uh, I went up there with a couple of friends. They're one of the few operations that has gone into a country and into a community with a long-term view to actually making it sustainable for the community to benefit beyond just a few quick tourism dollars. Camp manager Lebina Malefane has been here since the beginning. So when we came here to start building, many people were hired to do their work. So we had laborers changing day after day and laborers were coming one after another so that everybody could be able to, to come and work. And today, job opportunities here are still shared among the local villagers. One villager, who started out as part of the team that built the camp here, now makes his daily commute to work on his horse chopper. He works as a river ranger, a custodian, ensuring the health of the Bukong River. <laughs> Martin also guides visiting anglers here at Mahangwa. Today, on their day off, he and fellow guide David Taylor are getting to fish together. Do you think the trout will come up to dry flies? Dry flies is good. Once at the riverside, they read the waters. And then where, maybe yeah, yeah. towards that rock there? Yeah, yeah. And to the shallows. We look at the capacity, the singer that is not about the sugar sugar. Mohawa Holy Chair, also about the Osa Osa Chasse, also about the Osibunor. Take a horn out of Mona or a change in Chadibag as the Motu, Lemu to Anahova. The cabinet on a gavel to Anafella, we came moon, the Hatadibaga. The Mahangwa Community Camp is located on a spur of land where the Bokong River flows into the Khatse Dam. Both are home to a thriving population of indigenous yellowfish and wild trout. Each autumn, the trout congregate here, where the river and dam meet to spawn. <laughs> The high altitude and cool temperatures have made the Katze Dam well suited to aquaculture and to farms where trout are grown for the local and international market. But for these villages, employment opportunities other than those at Mahangwa are scarce. Yes, David, that's time. People living at Mahangwa, almost everybody has got sheep and goats. So we are struggling, but because of this camp, some of us are able to teach children and help people in the village. In tough fishing? There is something called the community levy. Every person who stays here, the owner of this camp pays 150 per night per person. <laughs> Cape Town is a gateway to a number of key fly fishing destinations in the Western Cape Province. It is also home to renowned artist Conrad Buertis. I've been pursuing a career in art for over 30 years and I'm always on my own when I work. With fly fishing, the solitude aspect is very important. I enjoy going fishing with my mates, but once we're on the water, you do your thing and I do my thing. You know, I'm on my own. Burtis, along with two friends, Tudor Caradoc Davies and Brendan Boddy, decided to create a unique fly fishing magazine and online portal. Their mission, to make fly fishing cool again. We shared the same sort of vision for what the mission should be. Right, kiss it. It was offbeat. It was like we tried to do something that, that was, wasn't done before. 
and part of doing things differently saw them steering clear of obvious covers. Fly fishing magazines, I think for quite a long time, had quite a formulaic thing where you would have the angler with a big fish in a hero shot. I think we probably had fish on the cover maybe three or four times in the last 39 covers. For Conrad, though he's illustrated several covers, one cover of which he's particularly fond is perhaps surprising. And it's not one of my illustrated covers. I've always wanted to catch one of those koi carp in the moat around the uh, castle of Good Hope. So I had this blue, light blue kind of nylon suit that I was wearing with a crazy hat and I tied a fly on a long shank hook that looked like a cigarette butt. And the first presentation, a carp just came up and goop. There we go. When not at work in his studio, he prefers to head to sea in a float tube to try and catch big saltwater fish on fly. For me, the flow tube is important because it gives me the ability to just to sort of go around and get to where the cob are, which is the thing that we're after. For Boatis, as with many others who fly fish, there's pleasure to spending time alone in nature that has little to do with what bites. I don't mind not catching fish if I know the fish are around. It's about engaging with, with the fish specifically, so the closer I can get to them, the better. The first thing that people uh, talk about when I tell them I've um, fish off a float tube in the sea is like, aren't you afraid of sharks? And the answer is no. Having fished across southern Africa and much of the continent, he has one special place he returns to consistently. You know, Gabon is described as Africa's last Eden, and it's truly one of the most magnificent, unspoiled places in the world. And going there, you don't catch a lot of fish, but the fish that you catch are gigantic, and the experience is gigantic. You see amazing things every day, your mind is just blown. Um, you know, I, I get back from a trip like that and I'm like, the minute I'm back in Cape Town, I'm already thinking about going back next year's trip. Fly fishing has its own community and culture, with dedicated enthusiasts sharing knowledge, techniques and experiences. At informal gatherings around the country, like this one in Cape Town, fly tires meet to tie flies and to plan fishing trips. Fly fishing is what you make of it. There's the nerd element where you research what they eat and you know their habits. There's the Zen meditation element because you're out there in nature. And then quite often there's the release that I think we're all looking for when you achieve your goal, which is to catch X fish and release it safely. And for the team behind the mission, it's about highlighting the riches the continent has to offer to anglers, wherever they're from. We are very proudly South African and African. We want to shine a spotlight on African species and destinations and get more and more people coming here to fly fish. Because I grew up looking at magazines of salmon and trout fishing in places like Alaska. And it's quite nice to be able to kind of flip it around and say to the world, have a look at what we're doing. It's pretty cool.